President Biden says the world is watching the U.S. to see if it can pass its infrastructure bill. The president was speaking in Connecticut, where he called on Congress to pass his better, to pass his Build Back Better agenda. The world is watching. Autocrats believe that the world is moving so rapidly that democracies cannot generate consensus quickly enough to get things done. Not a joke. I've had these, I've had hours and hours and hours of meetings and personal conversations with Xi Jinping. I spent more time with him, I believe, than any other world leader has when I was vice president and now on the phone. I've, every time he calls or we talk about this, and now it's a conversation between an hour and a half and two and a half hours. Not a joke. My word. But he doesn't think democracies can compete because they can't react quickly enough. Now, when it comes to dealing with China, the French finance minister, Bruno Le Maire, said European relations with the U.S. would also have to be built back better. He was speaking to Julia Chatterley, and he said the two partners must be on equal footing. One of the key questions for the next decades is how to deal with China. And we don't want the gap between uh, European countries and the United States uh, to widen over the next month or the, over the next years. I strongly believe that a better cooperation between European countries and the United States is the right response to this question, how to deal with China. And my uh, deepest thought is that we have to build back better between European countries and the United States so that we can give the same kind of response to this question, how to deal with uh, China. So the first step would be once again to reinforce the ties and the cooperation between the United States and European countries. But let's be very clear on an equal footing. We are not junior partners and France is not the junior partner of the United States. All European countries representing 450 million people with a single market are not junior partners to the United States. We want to be treated on an equal footing and I really think that this is clearly in the interest of the United States, in the interest of our American friends to have a stronger Europe and to have a Europe which would be more independent. Nothing there you can disagree with Michael Froman former U.S. trade representative and now vice chair and president of strategic growth at MasterCard. Equal footing, says Bruno Le Maire. Is he right? Well, I do think that the minister is right, that there's a lot to be gained by the U.S., Europe, other like-minded countries coming together and having a common approach to the major economic challenges, including the integration of, of China into the, into the global economy. We have a lot of common interests in that regard. And I, I do hope we can get to a conversation between China and the rest of the world about the major issues that are on the agenda, uh, that the, the structural issues in China and the nature of some new issues around the digital economy as well. Right. Catherine Tai, the current United States trade representative, gave a major speech in Geneva yesterday, the WTO, setting out how the Biden administration views the WTO. Now, there's an enormous amount that everybody agrees with. The disputes procedure that needs to be reformed, the negotiating procedure that needs to be performed. But she also pretty much laid down a marker that the US wanted the WTO to act differently. Well, I think it's important that we focus uh, less on the future of the WTO and more on the WTO of future. And by that, I mean, if the global leaders can come together and reach a common view, a consensus on what they are hoping to get out of the multilateral system, where they think there's the possibility of cooperating on, on new issues, for example, around uh, the digital economy or e-commerce or those sorts of issues, then the institutional issues, in my view, will sort themselves out. Oftentimes, we get too focused on a particular meeting coming up or a particular institution, what we really need is to have a political dialogue among leaders about what they expect out of the global trading system. Right. But, but Mike, if we just look at the, the China situation. Now, let's just take China. The tariffs 
and sanctions, if you will, that the Trump administration introduced, which Democrats railed against as being protectionist in the worst sort. Many of them remain. This administration has not returned to the status quo ante. No, that's right. And I, I think what, what there needs to what needs to happen is a real dialogue with China about what issues they're willing to talk about, policies of theirs that have an effect on the rest of the global economy, and what issues the rest of the world is willing to put on the table, including what to do about tariffs or restrictions on foreign investments or cooperation and research and, and development. So we've sort of been dancing around each other, but there's a need to get beyond just a discussion of purchase and sale agreements of, of how much how many soybeans are going to be bought or how much liquid, liquid natural gas is going to be exported and really get to the structural issues that are affecting the relationship between China and the rest of the world. It's not going to happen. I mean, there's no reason for it to happen. The Chinese are the sellers. They do have certain issues with agriculture that they need to buy, but they have the whip hand in these negotiations. You know, Richard, I think the, the China has had a remarkable period of, of growth and success over the last several decades, in part because there's been a benign international environment and a global trading system that has allowed them to, to export their way to, to higher incomes. I think what they need to sort of sort through is that that system is going to be less benign going forward. If other countries are going to close their markets to their exports, close their markets to investment, then what sort of challenges is that going to pose to their growth model? And what compromises are they willing to make accordingly? And we need to talk more about these in the future. Maggie, it's good to have you back with us on uh, Crestmeans Business. We look forward to your uh, a quick and swift return again. Thank you, sir.